Today on BRS TV 52 FAQ, we're talking fish food and auto feeders. Hi, I'm RT, one of your hosts of BRS TV with another episode of 52 FAQ, where each week we answer your questions from our popular 52 Weeks of Reefing series. This week we're answering Mike Ferreira's question from week 39, what's your favorite food to use with auto feeders for fish and corals? Auto feeders are a pretty cool addition to any reef because they remove one more maintenance step from the tank as well as automate things while you're gone on trips or other times when you can't be there to watch your tank. That being said, they're also one of the few gadgets that has the potential to crash your aquarium. For some reason, many reefers often end up feeding significantly more food per day with an automatic feeder than they would by hand and really consider the need to also increase their nutrient reduction methods like water changes to handle the increased nutrient load. This usually results in algae problems and other nutrient related issues that can overwhelm the hobbyist and their tank. So the biggest issue is finding the right type of food for your feeder where it's emitted in a consistent manner and the same amount is added each day. It's super easy to hate on auto feeders because it seems the difference between the quantity settings is just a tiny amount of food versus a ridiculous amount. This is a component of a few things, the size of the opening for that setting, the size of the food itself, and in addition to that, the amount of times it adds food a day. There are three main feeders we sell and this is my general take on all of them. Hydor's Eco Mixo works, but it's the loudest by far, the adjustments are a bit more fussy, and the mounting is a couple pieces of Velcro, so it's not my personal favorite. The Eheim is dead silent and the quietest of the three. It's also the most affordable and comes with a proper screw-on bracket, which makes it the most popular. However, the quantity setting is not quite as adjustable as you might like it, and it's a bit more finicky on pellet size. For instance, it works great in the smaller Akari foods like Seaweed Extreme and the Marine S Pellet, as well as the medium sized pellets like Neptune's Crossover Diet, all of which are pretty popular around here. However, the larger Hikari A pellet either gets stuck or it pours in too much. It's just the wrong size pellet for this feeder. The IntelliFeed from Lifeguard, which shares a lot of similarities with the Neptune automatic feeding system, is a bit louder than the Eheim, but it's much quieter than the Eco Mixo. It has the most programming options, the best bracket, and in my opinion, the best quantity adjustment as well, but it also costs twice as much. And like the rest of them, you always don't get the desired amount dispensed with a single rotation, so food selection is still important. So beyond typical nutritional facts, there are a variety of things I look for in a food that's going to be used with an auto feeder. The biggest component is a consistent size and shape that flows through the opening of the feeder the same way every time. For that reason, I'd skip inconsistent flake foods and focus on pellets. The pellet sizes should ideally be very consistent in size and shape, which is generally going to come from the larger manufacturers like Akari, but Neptune's crossover diet is an awesome choice as well because the size and shape is very consistent and is designed to feed both your fish and corals. I'd also try and avoid foods that float and go down the overflow, and in fact it almost always couple an auto feeder with a solid feeding ring. The feeding ring will help make sure the food added to the tank is actually eaten, which will allow you to add less overall. My favorites are the types from Innovative Marine or Skims that go below the water surface. You've probably caught on to this already, but generally speaking, I think the foods that work best in auto feeders are those medium sized pellets from Neptune or the smaller pellets from Akari, like the Marine S and the Seaweed Extreme. These are just a few of the foods that seem to dispense most evenly and consistently with auto feeders. A few other tips. Avoid mixing foods because they almost always have different sizes and they won't dispense evenly, but if you must, be really critical of their size. The two Akari foods with the S and the Seaweed Extreme work very well together. The Seaweed Extreme is particularly awesome. When we feed the BRS 160, I see the tangs often going after these pellets before the frozen Canadian Mysis, which is pretty impressive. Fish almost always prefer natural frozen foods over pellets, particularly Mysis, which almost every fish goes after aggressively. I'd also avoid foods with a high moisture content because they can mold in human environments like this. So even though everyone loves the soft foods from Fauna Marin, they're probably not the best choice for an auto feeder. Hopefully we helped answer some questions for those of you who are looking for the perfect food for your feeder, give us a quick thumbs up. And if you're looking for a more complete look on feeding, check out week 41, Feeding Fish, selecting food for maximum health and longevity. If you have any questions or tips for either us or the BRS community, let us know in the comments area down below. In this week's poll, we're asking all of you your preferred method of feeding, so please vote and check out the results to see what others are doing. I'll see you in the next BRS 52 FAQ where we answer John Phelan's question from week 38. How do you remove the coral frags from their plugs to get such a small coral to place in the tank?